Rejoice and be glad, for today the Lord has made. Amen. It is January 18th, 2022. Wow, are you kidding me? We're in some uh, perilous times. What I wanted to do today was give you the, the gospel. And the gospel meeting is good news. So when someone says, I've got the gospel, uh, what they're saying is, I've got good news, not bad news. I've got good news. Okay? And let's look at the good news. Here it is. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, good news, which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. Okay? By which you are also saved. This is the saving. This is the time we're in, the time of the Gentiles. This is the gospel we have for now. There was, a, and I'm going to show, uh, a gospel that was to the Jew. The Jew rejected Christ, and we're going to get into that. Which you're saying, okay? Where do you stand? For which you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in me. In other words, they don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, or that he is the Son of God. Therefore, they believed in me. Therefore, they're, they're still lost. They're sit there. They haven't made the connection that Christ came, uh, walked among us being the Word, and the Word was God, that He spoke every word that God gave Him, the Son, that what Jesus spoke, we can hear what Father is saying to us. Okay? Believe me. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I, Saul, who became Paul the Apostle, also receives. In other words, Paul the Apostle was the Pharisees of Pharisee. Therefore, he persecuted him, even putting Stephen to death. And th then he went on his way to Damascus. Well, on the way to Damascus, Christ meets him and, and asks uh, Saul at the time his name, Why do you persecute me, Jesus? And Saul was converted on the road to Damascus. And it's not the start of the body of Christ. The body of Christ started at the crucifixion. Um, Robert Breaker has got that down to a T. We start not by following Paul, but Paul who follows Christ. And therefore, we're supposed to do as uh, Paul says, follow me, and then we want to follow Christ. Well, Christ is the one who died on the cross. So the salvation that Paul had to receive first, how I received it first, how that Christ died for our sins, because he was crucified. That crucifixion shed blood. That shed blood takes care of our sins. The crucifixion itself takes care of the sins of Adam and Eve because the sin uh, that God says, if you sin, there is death and eternal hell. Well, Jesus died on the cross. So his scriptures is that Christ died on the cross shedding his blood. So he paid the price uh, for the sins of Adam. Okay. Then verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Well, there goes death. And when he came out of Hades, hell, he took paradise, what was down there, and he moved paradise up into the third heaven. So when you die, you don't go down to, to Hades, because paradise is now up. So there, to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Where is the Lord? He's sitting right next to his Father in the heaven. He's sitting there. So when we die now, we who are believers, we go up to paradise. And what did the scripture say about Hades? It greatly expanded when he took paradise and moved it up to the third heaven. So this scripture is the good news. Okay. Now here is Matthew 10, where we're going to show in Matthew 10, these 12 Jesus sent forth. And these 12 are his apostles including Judah, who's going to betray him. But these twelve, in the Old Testament, we call the law. In the, the Gospel of, of uh, Paul, that's in the uh, Age of Grace. Paul, so once Jesus dies, uh, it transforms from the book of Acts. It goes away from Israel. It comes over 
to the age of grace, Paul's teaching. So these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not, not, N-O-T, into the ways of the Gentile. I'm a Gentile. So how is this in the sky? How is Jesus, and it says also even more, and into any city of the Samaritans, and to not? How am I supposed to get saved? But rather, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? And to prove that this is for Israel only, and it's Acts 2, and it came to pass, this is Peter, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? Then Peter said unto them, uh, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All of this was under the law. This was Moses. That uh, they're still loving. They're they're still willing to to follow because they follow Christ, and Christ uh, made Peter an apostle. And he's saying, Jesus, this same Jesus you crucified, you can find salvation if you will repent and be baptized, every one of you. That's water baptism. Okay. But you see, in First Corinthians fifteen, we see. Right here, over uh, the gospel. It's not about works. It's not uh, the gospel as I preach unto you. It's about having faith in Christ and what He did, and the Christ that went to the cross for us. It's that like Christ died for us. It's that like Christ, who uh, was dead, overcame death uh, with uh, His resurrection. These is here. This part of First Corinthians 15 is a grace under the grace. Uh, is that everything uh, um, we do is what Jesus did. Under here, under Acts and everything, is who he was. Who Christ came. These 12, he came for the house of Israel. Israel was the ones who were supposed to be saved. They were supposed to see that Jesus was their Messiah. And then they would become, as the Bible says, a nation of priests. But instead, they sit there and they read the uh, Genesis that whosoever is uh, hung on a tree is cursed. So the, you sit there and you think of the cross, the thief on the one side saying, hey, remember me when you come in today. Okay? He's on a cross. He, he is admitting to Jesus that he knows he's a sinner. And Jesus says to him, this day you shall enter paradise. I say the murderer on the other side, I can do it either way, or the uh, second thief on the left. Well, he sits there and he says, if you're the son of God, get us down from here. And Jesus, and, and he sits there and he's thinking about himself. And he's a sinner. He's not seeing his salvation is right there in front of him. Okay? What do we see? We see that Jesus is the gospel. It's the works of his cross, his crucifixion, the burial, his resurrection, and his ascension to sit by the Father, where we get our faith, faith plus nothing. Daniel is where we are talking about, see, for Israel. After three score two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince shall come. Well, that was Rome, and they destroyed this the city of Jerusalem and went into captivity. Our, across the, the goal. 69 weeks, Cruz is crucified 2,000 years ago. Israel rejects him as Messiah. Israel is Paul. Saul becomes Paul who takes the gospel to Gentiles for the dispensation given by Jesus Christ to him. We have a gospel the gospel that we have today, Christians who believe in 1980, I quit drinking. I got the Holy Spirit come down. He entered into me. My language changed. My, my association with people changed. This gospel is precious. As I am uh, almost 73 years old in March, I'll be from 49 to 70, yeah, 2022 will be 73. And what we'll see coming is the new world order that George Bush wants. So what I'm trying to do at 73 as an elder, 
having been through, uh, been through the fire, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and of course was Christ. I have Christ with my fires and my tribulation. And that uh, you can have a truth if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, shedding his blood for your sins, was buried and rose the third day and sits now with the Father. And all you have to do is believe, have faith in his work. If we go with uh, the Roman Catholic Church and others, then you need works, which are mixing. They're trying to take the Old Testament and the New Testament we have, which is our right to walk with Christ. And they're trying to mix it together to come up with, oh yeah, you, you keep the Sabbath. And, well, if you're going to do that, then we circumcise See, and Paul himself in the scripture says, No, I didn't come to uh, Judaize the Gentiles. I came to give the gospel the good news. Jesus is saying, Israel should have recognized me through the prophets and such, but they rejected me. And because they rejected me, he hit the pause button. He has not forgotten. Hear me carefully. Israel is not forsaken. God said to put him on pause. And he says, you know what? Now I'm going to make you jealous. You, Israel, I'm going to make you judge. Uh, very jealous. And he took Paul the Apostle, who was Saul of Tarsus, the Pharisee of Pharisee, converted him, and is now preaching the gospel that just irritates the Jews because it's not the law. It's not Moses. It's this guy, that's, uh, this Nazarene, that was hung on a tree which tells them that, uh, well, he is cursed because he was hung on a tree. Well, that tree is a, is a tree of woe in uh, Conan the Barbarian. But in real life, it's sin. He took the sin of the world. He took, he who was without sin, took sin for us. He took my sin to himself. He freed me from the curse. And he did it freely. So all these uh, denominations where you donate and give money and yeah, and sometimes they get a little bit too far and then they get off and everything else into the wrong path. Freely Christ put on the flesh. Freely Christ spoke every word the Father gave him. Freely stayed without sin and judged not anyone. What am I talking about? The woman caught in the act of fornication. What did he say to her after he spoke to them? And I made a Analogy, uh, analogy of, of what was happening is that Jesus sits there and said to them, Whosoever is without sin, cast the first stone. And the woman that was at his feet. Well, I, I do the synopsis that there was a thump, thump. And you say, thump, thump? What's that? First thump was for the woman. It was a rock. The second thump was for the rabbi, Jesus. If they gave, if he gave them the wrong answer, they were going to stone both of them. The woman caught in adultery, and this rabbi was, he said, the law said, well, they said they had him. See, because the law says, under the law says, you're guilty. See, that's all the law does. The law convicts us that we are sinners through the act of Adam and Eve. But the grace of God, who took our place on the cross, says that by grace I have done it all. I have taken away everything that the devil has put on you, and I've taken it to myself. I died, shed my blood, was buried, and rose the third day, overcoming death, and then I ascended to the Father. That's what the gospel is, is that he has overcome all that. And it's there in scriptures, if you have the right person that you're listening to. But if you sit here in the Presbyterian, or, or I'm not sure what... Uh, or they preach, but I know the Roman Catholic, you gotta have, you gotta have works. I think maybe the Lutherans, you have to have works. But anyone that says you have to have works to get into heaven, they're not going by Paul's teaching. The dispensation wasn't given to uh, Lutheran, it was given to Paul the Apostle. Paul's teaching, Paul's gospel, is right here. Moreover, brethren, I declare back on the good news. Jesus says, I've done it. You can't do it. You're a sinner. You can't wash yourself because you're washing yourself in sin. Sin doesn't wash away sin. 
It takes righteousness. And the righteousness of Christ was shed at the cross. The devil, if he'd known what, what he was doing, would never have uh, killed Christ. He would have sit there and, and Christ could not come down. Sit there and say, well, if you're the sinner, take us down from this. Get, you know, the one guy who robbed or the murderer. If you're the son of God, take us down. Get us out of here. But if you come down, there would be no sin. There would be no judgment because Christ had to die for us. Our death would never have been taken from us because Christ would have come down. We would have still been guilty of the sin. So Christ died for us. That's the whole point of the cross. He died for us. And then he went through that all that he did so that we can come back to the Father through the work of Christ. Okay? Give me one second here. There we go. It's a little bit bigger. So, Father, I pray that this message, the gospel, the good news, in the first Corinthians of history, one through four, how your son came, took the cross to himself, which is taking our sins, the whole world, the sins of the world on his shoulders. And then he died shedding his blood to wash us of our sins and to take the curse as well from us. And that he did die. Therefore the wages of sin, as the scripture says, is death and Hades, the outer darkness. He did that for us. While he was there, he preached to the lost there, took uh, paradise, and then in his resurrection, brought it up and took paradise and put it in the third heaven, the kingdom of God. And then for 40 days he walked among the people of Israel, and yet even after 40 days they could not believe it. They sit there and were stuck on this Genesis that whosoever is, is hung on the cross is cursed. He hung on the curse not because he was guilty of sin. He hung on the, on the cross because he was innocent. That innocence is what was took the sins from us. I pray people that you sit here that listen to me. You make that decision soon because Father, I see the new world order coming. I see the man of sin getting ready. I see tribulation getting ready, which we call the really Jacob song. Israel is going to be back in God's sight. Israel is going to be protected. He has a place for them to their going when the man of sin comes out halfway that they're going to flee to Jordan in that place prepared for them. Father, I sit here and just wish that the, the word that is yours would speak for itself that you read for yourself and understand. I opened my heart. I believe that Jesus was the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he shed his blood for my salvation. And I pray that anyone who hears this prayer, you make the same decision and ask Christ into your heart. Amen.